Greetings. This is a volcano and earthquake watch for October 27 through to October 31st. A strong coronal mass ejection impacted the Earth's magnetic field yesterday, which sparked a G3-class geomagnetic storm. Now, with recent solar observations of a strong solar tsunami and an array of coronal mass ejections, this indicates the possibility of a strong volcanic eruption or a 7.3 magnitude earthquake during this watch. We're now looking at the latest solar wind telemetry from ACE, and we get to see solar wind speeds have changed quite dramatically over the last 12 hours, where 350 kilometers a second spiked up towards 600 kilometers a second upon the arrival of the coronal mass ejection on the Earth's magnetic field. We also see a major change in solar wind density and also solar wind temperature. That's a strong indication of the coronal mass ejection released from the solar corona around three days ago has had significant impact, creating the G3-class geomagnetic storm. We're now looking at the Solar Terrestrial Activity Report via Solon.info, where we get to see a strong coronal hole formation in the Southern Hemisphere and labelled CH481. Now, I believe there is a strong potential of a fairly powerful earthquake embedded in this coronal hole, and this will be the main focus for my watch. We're now looking at a split screen of the Hanode XRT and the SDO composite moving imagery and focusing on the southern hemisphere and this coronal hole formation. Now I have isolated 19 to 25 degrees south latitude as the most likely area that could produce a fairly powerful earthquake and I'll plot and map these regions now. There are some powerful ionospheric anomalies showing up in South America over the last few weeks which is of concern when you combine this with a coronal hole allocated 19 to 25 degrees south latitude. The main areas of focus for my watch are for the regions of Antofagasta in Chile, stretching up towards Tarapaca in Chile, and across the border in Bolivia in Potosi, also extending down to the region of Jujai, Argentina. These would be the main areas of concern as they do have an associated ionospheric anomalies attached as well. And the second area of concern for my watch, which extends 19 to 25 degrees south latitude, are for the regions of Tonga and the region south of Fiji. I do believe that there is a strong symmetry with this region as well, and this will be the second area of concern for this watch. We're now looking at some strong ionospheric anomalies that have been picked up over the last few days, and I have put them in a little movie clip. Now, the main concentrations are in South America, which is of concern, and also in northern Sumatra in Indonesia. These are the main areas of watch over the next few days. There's one more region that may receive an event during this watch based on earthquake migration analysis and it's all stemming from earthquakes that occurred yesterday. The first earthquake occurred near Iceland in the Jan Mayer region. The second of these earthquakes migrated in the Caucasus region in Russia. And the third of these earthquakes migrated down towards the southwest Indian ridge and a 4.9 magnitude earthquake just under the Reunion Islands. So if these earthquakes were to continue migrating, we may see an event in the Pacific Antarctic Ridge or the Bellany Islands. And there also could be a migration up towards Baja California or Southern California as well. So this is a concern and worth keeping a close notice of as we may see an event over five in magnitude in one of these regions over the next day or two. We're now looking at the outgoing long wave radiation anomaly. This is showing parts of the globe that could be susceptible of some significant seismic events based on radiation signatures, and the areas we're focusing on are shaded in darkish green. The main areas of focus for this week are for the regions of Mauritius, the Ryukyu Islands and Japan regions, the Southern East Pacific Rise and Easter Islands region, and also in Brazil. These would be the main areas of focus for this week. Now there is a fairly strong reading showing up in Havana, Cuba, but this is mainly due to Hurricane Rena. There's also a signature up in the southwestern flank of Russia, and we've already had a 4.3 magnitude earthquake in the Caucasus region. These would be the main areas of focus in terms of outgoing long wave radiation anomalies for this week. We're now looking at the Australian Pulsation PC3 index, where we get to see a fairly large signature showing up on this service. Now this has only come over the last 24 hours. And this is a good indicator of a fairly powerful earthquake headed our way in the Southern Hemisphere. Now this has been extremely accurate in the past and I thought I'd show this again today. There are two volcanoes that may be at risk for activation during this watch and these are centered in Bolivia and that's the Uturunco volcano. And the second volcano that may be activated during this watch 
and that's also in the 19 to 25 degree latitude zone, and that's in the Reunion Islands called the Paton de la Fournaise. These are the two volcanoes that could be activated during this watch, and it's worth keeping a close notice of. And that's my Volcano and Earthquake Watch for October 26, 2011. For more information, please visit my website at solarwatcher.net. Annotations will be added during and at the end of the video. Thanks for watching.